You're welcome back. Labour Party has condemned the invasion and occupation of party secretariat, including thugs and uh, unauthorized policemen drafted from the government house and also ahead of the Imo state governorship election scheduled for November 11. The Labour Party has also been under fire for fixing the price of its expression of interest and nomination forms at 25 million, a whopping 25 million. Well, joining us to discuss the crisis at the national level and also preparations for the primaries in Imo State is uh, retired Colonel Chinyere, OB, Labour Party Chieftain. And we're hoping also to be joined by Chinedu Amadi, Labour Party Governorship Aspirant in Imo State. Thank you very much, Colonel, for joining us on the program. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, let's just begin from the national scene. Uh, there is a Lamy D. A Papa who is insisting that he is the authentic or the acting chairman of Labour Party right now. Is that a consensus decision that gave him that position or is just arrogating powers to himself? He's just arrogating power for himself. Nobody gave him any power. So what's, what's, what's happening at the national um, level now? Who is leading Labour Party right now? It's supposed to be a worry, but the people now came and brought talks. And then when they brought talks, if you are a bore, he finds his way through the back door. Because the way they came, they are coming to destroy. They are not coming for peace. Hmm. Because when they came in, they went upstairs and started shouting, Labour, Labour, Labour. Uh, let me come here. I don't know why, why is labor. There's PDP, there's Abka, but why labor? Everybody is out for labor. It wasn't like this before, but immediately they saw that P2B is their headache. Everybody's attacking labor now, which is not supposed to be like that. It has been peace, peace, peace. Like the president to be, to be said, everybody should be calm. Like they said, let's move to court. And we're already in court. So I don't still see why they are fighting us while we are still in court. I don't see the reason why they should come to labor headquarters. Only God knows who sent them. But they are not one of the labor party. And they are not one of the obedient. So I don't know where they are coming from. Okay. It's only God that knows. Uh, before now, you were uh, supporting a PDP candidate in the 2019 general elections, and now you are Labour. What changed? Um, when I supported a PDP, that's article, I went with 1936 states with article and p 2 I always go and visit prison. I played football for him. I know how much I spent. But when I saw that there's nothing coming out of PTP, and I was there that very day when uh, they paid 100 million for each uh, ticket, PTP that time. But when I see there's nothing coming out of, I didn't see anything that would come out of PTP and article. Because he always do when anything they happen, he will not go back to. Dubai and forget about us. Even when we went to Supreme Court, I was there shouting, we need our mandate. We went to her eye neck and shouted. But the person we are fighting for does not care about the promises. So that's why, and when I saw that Ritopi has decapped, I followed him to decap as well. Okay. Uh, I understand that we're being joined by Honorable Chinedu Amadi, a Labour Party governorship aspirant. Honorable Amadi, good evening and welcome to the program. Good evening. Thank you for having me on your program. Okay, Labour Party in Imo State, first of all, uh, the expression of interest form is very, very high. Hoping 25 million we hear. Um, what informed that, first of all, and how are the people taking it? Is that a question for me? Yes, it's, it's for you, Honorable Amadi. You are in the race. I'm sure that you spent that much. How are the people taking it? I think the matter has been resolved, and um, 
uh, Labour as a listening party has actually moved on from that uh, um, form um, pricing. You know, it was reviewed downwards to 15 million, and that matter is is done and dealt with. So um, we are now on course with the primaries for Labour Party. And how many of you are, are, are standing in for this position, are running these primaries to get the ticket to contest as Labour uh, governorship candidates? Um, I didn't hear you clearly. How many of you are the contenders under Labour Party? Uh, we are... We are 16. Uh, presently, we are 15. Uh, we lost uh, one of the uh, aspirants, uh, Barista Humphrey, at Anumodu. Mm -hmm. So rest in peace. And so we are 15 on course. Okay. Let me go back to Cordell. Um, you said that you left the PDP because you didn't see anything coming out of PDP. You are now in labor because the prospects are higher and all that. But you are in a state where the incumbent is APC, and he also is qualified to stand again to run for governorship. What are the chances of Labour Party in a state like Imo State? We already know that Imo State, you know, before we got the governor that is sitting right now, we still do not understand how it went. What do you think will happen? How do you think Labour Party will fare in that state, Imo State? Yeah, in, in this, our emo state, I have been here for complete six months now that I came back to emo state from Abuja. And then what I'm seeing in emo state, the war is no more politics, it's now war. And the war in emo state now has become survival of the fittest. And then what I'm saying at my age, by June 6th, that will be 74 years. I'm not seeing anything in labor. Because the way they are looking at this is no more politics. It's no more, uh, let me come in and see if I win. They are fighting a battle that is either we win or we fight. It's a war. But let them remember, I'm asking their parents, that they are coming to fight somebody who said that it will be over my dead body for somebody to take that seat. And me and you know the way he came in last time, last time, fought from fourth position to governorship. And what I'm saying now, there's somebody who can fight him. That is General Jack Ogulewe. Nobody else. Because this is the man that is a general in the army and retired. I'm not praising him because I'm a colonel. I'm praising him because I just met him once at the airport. And I know what he's capable of doing. And I know he's the only one that can fight this fight. And, and at least if he comes in, he has already, and the present government are shaking now that he's a general in the army that is going to fight this fight. And then we can have peace in our way. Or we don't have peace now. Or what we have here is, I'm from Imo State anyway, it that precisely. But there's a war in Imo State. If you go to the secretariat, you will know. These people will come and say they are the new one. They will go to court and put court injunction. And the next one will come and say they are the old one. This is politics. This is not when we're in the army. This is not when you are fighting a war, a Kumok war. You are fighting a war. It's either one. Out of these 15, he's saying, it's only one person that will match. For delegates. Okay. Well, and it's only one person that will fight. It's this. a good thing that uh, Honorable Amadi is here. Uh, Honorable Amadi, um, she has just said uh, she throws in her cap for the general. Uh, but you are in the race as well. What are you bringing to the table that you think will mark you out, uh, will stand you out uh, among your peers? Oh, thank you for the question. Um, 
I will start by trying to address some of the positions of the, oh, sorry. You see, one of the problems of Nigeria, uh, like goes off and on. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. So address the uh, question about uh, insecurity. I believe that's uh, one area that um, needs to be properly addressed when it comes to uh, governance in the states. You know, so uh, rightly as she pointed out, um, the way the incumbent came into power is of course a challenge and that has uh, agitated the spirit of the uh, uh, Imolites. Uh, they've never found it comfortable within themselves to, to see such a thing happen in the state. And uh, that is one of the factors that is triggering the insecurity issue in the state. Now, that coupled with um, the high rate of unemployment in the states, on record, um, you would um, know that uh, Imo State has the highest unemployment rate in Nigeria, with a thriving youth population uh, nearing 3 million. That is um, a time bomb on its own. So. But I want us to look at Imo State and we see a smaller model of Nigeria in Imo. You know, it shares simil similarities with, with Imo. You know, the problems in Nigeria is um, similar to those of Imo. Um, you look at insecurity that is ravaging the country. And uh, of course, we have a general as the president of the country, and yet uh, couldn't, uh, we couldn't solve the problem of insecurity. So now, similar to Imo State, um, if we want to solve the problem, first we have to give the people the mandate, the kind of governor that they want. That will give them peace of mind. And I tell you, I give you assurance that the moment you do that, you would have um, about 50% of these um, tensions going, going on in the state uh, disappear. Then the rest will be on how to deal with the insecurity itself, the remaining part of it. And that has to do with revamping the economy, reviving the economy, creating employment, you know, going back to the farmlands, creating are Greek industries, creating manufacturing industries, getting the youth busy. They say the idle mind is a devil's workshop. Uh, the youth have not engaged themselves in negative vices because there's nothing to do. So the problem we must say lies more in, in the economy rather than us looking at insecurity. The bedrock of that insecurity is first the injustice, then secondly, the high rate of unemployment. You deal with these two two things, you will have in the state on proper cover. Then you will now follow up with intelligence monitoring. I tell you, with um, two drones in the in the forest of uh, Osu, Uru East, and Uru West, and you have a security center, you can monitor the activities, you know, and uh, begin to address them or mobilize your. Uh, security agencies properly to go, not to go in blindly, because it's when they go in blindly that uh, innocent souls are, are taken off and causes more grievances in the society. So that is the problem of the uh, Imo state. And I think uh, it has nothing to do with the, uh, uh, being a general. And if you want to uh, look at examples worldwide, we can take uh, Ukraine and Russia and we see uh, a president who used to be a comedian who is now um, fighting the war with Russia and doing so very well with it. So, and um, lastly, I will say that once you become a governor, a head of state, you become a general yourself. 
because it's a security agency line up with you. So I don't believe um, uh, in the fact that uh, the incumbent is um, a lion. I think that is an over description. We need to um, properly align things, you know, and uh, look at security from the point of intelligence monitoring, putting innovation and technology into security um, issues and addressing it properly, then creating a viable economy for Imo State. And that is that is a real point we have to focus on. Once we get that done, Imo State will get back, get back on course. Okay. And I think um, with my exposure first, uh, my exposure working in the oil industry, um, running um, various ventures, real estate, IT, uh, farms, and also running, heading an organization that looks at capacity building for youth and women, I know that I have all the qualities. I'm already looking at the vision of IMO for the next 40 years. Where do we want to get our infrastructure to? Okay. Right now, we are sitting on an infrastructure that is 40 years old. Right. Things built by um, Dr. Sam Mbappe. We need to ask, we need to get him ready for another 40 years. Okay. And, and that's where we're going. Thank I'm you. Youthful, thank you energetic. very much. I think out of the box. I'm a very analytical. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. Um, we, we yeah, do know. Let, me, let me ask you a question. With, oh, just a moment. Okay. Just a moment. I know that you, the contenders may be up to 16, like you have said. And whoever emerges after the primaries, I know all of you will queue behind that person. The contenders include also uh, the immediate past chairperson of International Federation of Women Lawyers Association, FIDA, Imo State, Ndidi Vale Keome, Keoma, uh -huh. and so many other people. But the issue here is that when or if somebody emerges, when somebody emerges and you are going into this election, there are two opposing forces against you that will be working against you. The incumbent, who is APC. We also have PDP, which is likely to have a consensus candidate. Remember that Ihedioha, Mecca Ihedioha, who uh, was the governor for a time and now left because of the Supreme Court ruling, and it is now someone else who is sitting there has said that he's no longer contesting. So it seems they're going to have a consensus, maybe in the person of Senator Samuel Anyawu, who is the National Secretary of the People's Democratic Party, PDP. So these two forces, a major opposition party in the country, having a consensus candidate, and then you're having the incumbent who is of the APC. So does it not give you worry that Labour Party may come a distant third or fourth in the election? What do you think that you can do to make sure that it will turn in your favor? Let me start with you, Cornell. As a party, yeah, what are the I, chances of Labour knowing these two other parties are standing with you? Yeah. I want to ask him a question. He's talking about security. Do we have security in Imo states? The answer is no. On the 18th, I was shot on my leg. As they have the wound, would come short for House of Assembly in my own local government, Ida does. And um, I'm just asking a question, Chiedu, Honorable Chiedu. This con this Imo state need a security. Without security, listen when they say sit at home. So many people were killed when they said every Monday people should sit at home. Let's just try to wrap up, Colonel. Let's just try to wrap up. Just, just and, uh, we're, we're concerned about I'm the, the chances of Labour Party. I, I know that all this, yeah, you will a, iron them out when the primaries are over, but the chances of Labour Party, now whoever emerges... General Lincoln Ogunewe. Is the only person that can salvage Imo states. Come for security. Come to, when you talk about security, this is the man that knows what is security all about. I'm a retired colonel. I know what is security is all about. We are security conscious. But here, 
Imo State has no security. And I believe that nobody can fight this man if he's not General Ogunlewe. He's the only one that he did it in Abia State. And I believe that he will do it in Imo State. Because he's the only people like that bringing all the soldiers that is not even real. When you even tell them Esprit de Corps, they don't know what is this. Advanced to be recognized, they don't know what it is. Then it's only his own soldiers that we ask these questions. And we now we now flush all the soldiers that are coming up now because it's going okay. to be a war. It's okay, I, I, it's, I, it's, it's, it's unfortunate that we may not have time to deal with all the issues that we need to deal with. But we would just like to uh, wish Labour Party good luck in the forthcoming elections. We do hope that you will uh, put all differences aside, you will be able to elect someone at the primaries that can wrestle power, as it were, from the incumbent and from the uh, major opposition party and form a new or, or give a new fre uh, breath, uh, fresh breath, as they say, to Imo State. We do hope that that will happen. But if it doesn't happen, we do still hope that Imo State will be the better for it, whatever outcome the election is going to give us. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Honorable Chinedu Amadi, for coming on the program. We wish you luck as well. And also, Colonel Chinyere Obi, retired uh, Labour Party chieftain, thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, we've been talking with uh, chieftains of uh, Labour Party in Imo State. One is an aspirant and the other one is a supporter of an aspirant, but both of them are chieftains of Labour Party. And uh, they're talking to us about what is going on in Imo State. And their hopes are high. We keep our fingers crossed. We see what comes out of that. But we pray for a better Nigeria and all the federating, federating units of Nigeria. And that's how we're going to wrap it up on the show tonight. See you again tomorrow. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. <laughs>